Welcome back to this special conversation with Jose Vinals. He is the chairman of Standard Chartered Bank, PLC, but more importantly has been a central banker and has been an economist with the International Monetary Fund. Okay, Mr. Vinals, uh, banking. Indian banking is in a very uh, uh, interesting situation. Uh, there are uh, some problems with uh, a lot of corporate lenders, largely public sector banks, which have a lot of bad assets. And then recently there was also a fraud in one of the banks. Uh, not very big compared to the size of Indian banking, but still, this is raising questions as to whether public sector or uh, running banks in the public sector is a good idea. What are your thoughts? Well, I think that uh, there is no one size fits all. And I think that the international experience shows that uh, public sector banks um, can function well, but for that to happen, you need to have, uh, in all cases, proper uh, corporate governance and that decisions are made in a way that are prudent and that achieve the sort of goals of these public banks, but also ensure the return of the loans in order not to have uh, non-performing assets down the road. So I think that the criteria of prudent banking applies to either private banks or to yeah. uh, public the banks. The fear is that there could be more political interference in public sector banks. and Or even if there is no political interference, can you run modern banking as a government department? In sheer, in, uh, it's an efficiency question I'm asking you. There is the other side which believes that private sector banks have not covered themselves with glory all the time. Yeah. But I mean, as a person who has seen banks in many countries, what would your... Well, I think, I think that the international uh, trend is for a larger scope for private banks and a narrower scope for public banks. But that doesn't mean that public banks cannot and should not play a role. Even if you look at advanced economies, you have public banks uh, playing a role, uh, public development banks. You have them in Germany, you have them in Spain, you have them in other countries. If you look at the United States, which is the paradigm of uh, the most sophisticated financial market in the world, what you can see is that two uh, government-sponsored enterprises, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, those played a very important role in the mortgage sector so, in, and in mortgage financing. So you always have, or you also have these uh, public banks there. The important thing is that uh, these banks are run properly and that they do not take risks which may compromise their future. That's a critical thing. So that's why I emphasize the issue of corporate governance and having prudent, uh, a prudent risk management uh, framework being adopted so that the decisions do not ultimately undermine the stability of these institutions because that is negative. So again, there are good and bad examples. And I think that compared to 50 years ago, the role of public banks is now much narrower. But uh, even with this narrow role, if they are well run, they have a role to play. And also, it doesn't mean that if you're a private bank, you're going to do a good job, because the global financial crisis showed that private banks, when the, or commercial banks, when they are run, or investment banks, when they're run in a way which is not prudent, they can get themselves and their countries and the world in a lot of trouble. Uh, we were, of course, hoping in India that as we have more digital payments, uh, we could data mine and give more loans to unbanked segments. Uh, India has only recently uh, extended banking services to practically the entire population. So we are very hopeful of digitization. But do you think before we get there, the world may actually get some aversion to digitization, the way in which uh, we've had these Facebook and FANG stocks perform because of the problems? Do you think we are already you know, <laughs> troughing out? I, I think there are two things. One, and if you think of India in particular, this is a country with an extraordinarily dynamic demography. So young people are more and more important. And that happens also in many other parts of the world. And young people, the millennials and so on, they relate uh, to the world by use, the use of technology. And for them, digital technologies is key. So we really need to make sure that we use digital as a way of banking uh, the, the new generations. Now, I think that 
um, the fact that you have had problems with Facebook yes. may tell you something. Not is not saying that digitization is bad or that technology is bad. What it's telling you is that when you have big companies which have access to data, they need to be this data need, needs to be better protected or regulated. We as banks, we get a lot of data from our customers, but we protect that data. We do protect that data. If you come and you want a loan from us, and we know a lot of things about you, we are not going to let this data go into the public domain. This is absolutely confidential information. And that hasn't happened in the case of Facebook. What you have now is that these big companies, they're global companies, they're companies which are not subject. They're doing a lot of bank crazy banking services. They are not subject to appropriate regulation, unlike banks. They are not subject to appropriate competition regulation, unlike any other company. And even in terms of taxation, it is unclear when they pay taxes or not. And then there is data protection issues. So what this is telling you that technology, digitization is critical, but we need to review some of the aspects of digitization to make sure that they do not compromise consumer protection or the safety and soundness of the financial system. For instance, some of these big companies or the cloud are providing services to a number of financial institutions simultaneously. So they become a kind of new, new sort of too big to fail institutions. And therefore, they have attracted the attention of regulators lately. So digitization, yes but with some safety standards that I'm sure will be forthcoming. Oh, yes, you've pointed out to a lot of uh, regulations that should come in. I'm more worried that privacy laws uh, should come in, uh, at least in our country. Uh, a final question to you, and I thought I would spend more time in that, but we are out of time. Uh, what do you see as Standard Chartered's role in India? Well, we are in Mumbai, and I love this monument gateway of India. And I think that Standard Chartered um, is, we want to be a gateway of India into the world and a gateway of the world into India because of the special role that we play in financing trade and investment cross borders. Um, for us, India is a very, very important market. We've been here for 160 years. In fact, Standard Chartered was a merger of two banks, one of which was a charter bank of India, Australia, and China. So we were born here. Half of us, half of the bank was born here. And this being an economy with such a, an outstanding growth performance, which I hope will be enhanced in the future through the appropriate policies being pursued by the government. A country which is now in terms of purchasing power parity the fourth largest economy in the world, and in terms of market exchange rates, the seventh economy in the world, we think that, and with this tremendous demographic dividend, which if the young people are, a prop, are properly educated, would be tremendous source of, of, of strength for the Indian economy, this is a market where we are very committed, and we are investing and developing new things all the time so that we can help uh, India uh, continue to develop, uh, take their true place in the world, and India's success is our success. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vinals, for uh, uh, making us feel that, uh, well, we are about to take leadership of the world. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks very much indeed. Take care. Thank you.